Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Test and Tune. And it's another product that I'm quite excited about getting. Um, one of the first videos we, did, we ever did on this channel was unboxing of a Palmito dash cam versus, well, they're a dash cam and rear view mirror setup. Um, they're a brilliant thing. We've actually run, I've lost count. I think we've got five of these reverse cam mirror things. Um, and I just really like them. It's a cheap way to add a reverse camera to your vehicle and also a dash cam at the same time. And the Pomido one, the one I bought back in January, was one of the most expensive ones I've ever bought, but it's also been one of the best. So it's funny how price equals a better product. Um, however, long story short, quite a lot of people saw the Palmito video and on this channel and our other channel, and Palmito actually saw it as well, and they got in touch when they were developing their new model, the PR988. I hope I got that right, because um, I only just received it today. Now this new one, they've been, they're one of the few sort of, let's be real, these are a cheap product compared to like a brand name something, like a Blackview. Uh, they're less than half the price of a Blackview and have more features. But Palmito, uh, they do listen to their customers and they've basically listened to things that people want improving. Now, I didn't have many issues with the 966. Um, however, like I said, I've got quite a few of the cheaper versions and the 966 just works better. But they said their customer feedback was basically saying that the, uh, the dynamic range of the cameras wasn't ideal. Now, Palmino is also, also one of the few companies that use genuine Sony lenses. And they've told me this one has the Sony, I think it's an M or an X355. Um, I'll put a link to all the, the technical specs on it. But they've got a new lens in the cameras, which is actually, or a new sensor, I should say, which works much better for dynamic range. So if you've got glaring sun coming at you or coming from behind the car, the way it should work that out will be much better. And I will test that in the fitting video that is gonna come in the next few days. So it is the PR998. And unboxing it, the packaging's pretty much identical to the 966. Um, they've actually done a bit more work on their instruction manuals. That's quite good, which I'll have a look through that later when we get a chance. But it looks like the normal sort of setup. Um, we have, what have we got in here actually? Oh, sorry, let's get all this unboxed. Straps, they supplied a genuine SanDisk card, which they did with the other one. That's all going strong. And we also have the anti-glare cover. Now. We actually have the Palmito in our main work vehicle. It's a large transit van that's full of windows. So we had a lot of light inside the van and the Palmito anti-glare strip is a must on that thing. So you don't get the reflections. Although because these aren't a normal mirror on all the cars, you'd actually just point them up at the roof. You'll see the screen fine, but it will just reflect up onto the roof of the car and you can normally get away with it. So looking at the packaging, we have the charge cable, a little bit of sticky things to help with the installation and a tool to pry it into trims. We have the main, that is the rear camera cable. So it's different to what we get on the previous generations and that's because normally the rear camera will go into the 3.5 port. Now the rear camera is a USB socket. So that's interesting. That will, that will be interesting. We have a 3.5 mil that's a TTRS cable by the looks of things. And I'm guessing that is what now connects the front camera because the camera is now separate. So this was a big thing that Palmito said uh, their customers complained about was positioning the front camera. And I guess depending on your vehicle, uh, we are right hand drive here and having the camera there on the old model works absolutely fine. It was no issues for us at all. But I guess some people do have positioning issues. And I guess if you are a, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why people had problems with it. We never did. But they've listened. They now have a separate unit for the camera. One plus with this, you can position it, I guess, anywhere around the windscreen and you're going to get the perfect angle that you want looking forwards. So that is a good thing. We have the rear camera in this little cable here. And that looks like it's the same housing that was on the previous model. But like I said, it should have the updated sensor, all the hardware to mount it. Cool. All right, I'm gonna switch the camera around. We'll fire this up and we'll go through all the menus and just see what's changed and if it is more responsive. Okay, so I've just plugged in the front camera and the rear camera into these two connections here and I've got a USB power supply that I'm just gonna see if we can run it. They normally do boot up fine. Plug it in. Will it, it does, it turns on. And 
pretty similar boot time. Like, so you're booted within five seconds of turning the car on. And has that gone to, yeah, that's the rear camera working there. It's still got the protective cover on it. We'll just take that off and you can get a bit of an idea on the clarity of the cameras. It's a very contrasty type uh, image, but not bad, not bad. There's a lot of detail in there. Like you can see all my freckles, which is awesome. Uh, something else just to keep in mind with these, with the way that we're looking at this here, obviously this is showing a, a small snippet of the full sensor. So when it's actually in the car working as a dash cam, the picture is huge, not scrollable like this. Uh, let's go to the other camera. So we'll switch cameras. This should now be the front camera. And there we go. Very similar picture quality. Again, it's quite detailed, pretty contrasty. I'll just leave it pointing there. And again, we can scroll up and down that full image. Now let's just have a quick look at the menus. We'll go full brightness. Okay, and we'll go there. Resolution is 1080p. I'll see if we've got any other options. Yeah, you can wind it down to 720. In the work van, I actually run it at 720. I think that picture quality is more than enough for what we do with the vehicle. Like we really just want it as an accident an accident camera, so if somebody does have an accident or the vehicle's involved in an accident, we know who's at fault. Um, although I do know some people try and get like number plates and that sort of thing, we don't get that involved. We've got insurance, so as long as it's obvious it's not our fault, we're fine. I have the loop recording set to one minute, although it is handy that you can have longer files. Normally, in my opinion, if you have an accident, one minute is gonna cover what's gone on leading up to the accident and it's easy to save that file. We do also record sound. Um, main reason for that is you can hear if the driver is distracted leading up to the accident which is quite handy auto record i've always just left that on and i think it just means that it will basically when you turn the car on this picks up power through the cigarette adapter and then starts recording the event cycle uh, i haven't played with that i do need to properly read up on it although i've just left ours off on the older model beep is on is obviously just when you touch it mirror imaging now you can use that if you are positioning the cameras in a way where you want to mirror the image. Uh, we've just left it on. And I guess the other thing is you can set it up so it works more like a mirror, but I just leave it default, that's fine. Clock settings, let's set the clock. It is 2.31 on the 13th. Not too far, 13th of the 8th. We come back, 2020. Um, yeah, the screen's like quite responsive, it's not bad. It picks up every single touch. It is a capacitive screen. Cool. Language, English, LCD power saver. I've always left that off. I assume, well basically what it'll do, we'll just turn the screen off but I want to leave it on because I use it as a rear camera as well. And the thing that's brilliant about them, because you've got this on the back of the car working as your rear camera, if you've got a van full of goods, which we often do, you've still got full rear view mirror use, I suppose. Um, where normally a lot of our drivers will get nervous if they can't use the rear mirror and they have to rely on the side mirrors where this just, it gives them a bigger field of view than a normal mirror, it's brilliant. Okay, date and time hidden, that's normal stuff. Oh, back down. Parking monitoring. Now with the parking monitoring, it only works on the older model if you've got power going to it. And obviously when we turn the car off, there's no power. I think there is a little battery inside, but it's never stayed on long enough to capture anything happening, or maybe nothing's ever happened to the van, I guess. It is a good feature, although I'll be honest, I don't use it. Now G-sensor, G-sensor sensitivity, that will automatically save an event if the mirror is knocked. Um, it's not gonna work now because we're in the menu, but yeah, it's just handy to save an event so that it separates that file if the if the car's in an accident, basically. Reverse line is when you um, when you actually connect the reverse wire up to the reverse lights, and I'll show you on the install video once we get it done. Um, it basically just gives you guidelines for parking, so that is handy. I actually do use that in the older model. Reverse line correction. Now I don't remember seeing these, but that's oh, that is bloody hell. I've never seen that on any of these mirrors. Being able to do that, because obviously where you position the mirror, the, or the rear light on the, the rear camera on the back of the car affects where these lines need to be relevant to. That is a brilliant feature. I didn't know it had that, they didn't mention that. Awesome. And what else have we got? Reset setup, format SD card, and the firmware version. 
Well, it all sort of does what they expected, but I am more so looking forward to seeing uh, the high dynamic range. Actually, I'll point it over there at the outside. That's not bad. So obviously there's heaps of light outside, but it's still lighting up inside the... I'll turn the camera up the right way, so it makes a bit more sense. So yeah, obviously there's heaps of light outside, and we're actually quite dark in this room. I've made it all shadowy, so I light up a bit better. Um, but yeah, the dynamic range is actually working quite good for a cheap camera. Gonna be interesting to see if it's better. I'm gonna get this installed in the next couple of days, and I will put a link below on this video. Actually, let me switch cameras. <laughs> I'm going to put a link below on this video to the install video and the testing video we do once it's in the car. Uh, but for now, that is the unboxing of the PR998 by Palmito. Don't forget it has got the updated Sony lens, sorry, Sony sensors, uh, also the anti-glare material. It's going to be one of the best mirror packages you can buy. I'm really happy with the first Palmito. They've hooked us up with a deal on this one, um, but it's not like a proper sponsored video. Uh, they just like the other video we did, and we like the product. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching another Test and Tune. Until the next one, peace.